What is going on everyone? Today I'm going to be talking about EPIC certifications. I actually released a video about this over a year ago and uh, I'm reshooting it and doing a little bit of a revision because that video that I shot wasn't very effective. It was actually one of the first videos I did and the audio quality wasn't that great. So I've taken some of the feedback from that video, revised some of the content, reformatted some of the answers and added new content into this video to hopefully address your questions better. Uh, and specifically in this video, so you know what you're be getting yourself into, I'm gonna talk about five different things, actually five different questions. First of all is why do you, or why would you want an EPIC certification? Two, how do you get an EPIC certification? Three, can you do it on your own? Four, I currently work for an EPIC institution, what are my next steps? And five, do you need to be in the medical field to get an EPIC certification? So the first question is about why would you want to have an EPIC certification? The answer to this is actually very simple. You're not allowed to work in EPIC unless you have an EPIC certification. So for those of you who want to be EPIC analysts or EPIC consultants, which I'm assuming most, if not all of you, because you're watching this video, you cannot work in EPIC and cannot be an EPIC analyst or consultant unless you have one. So that's a very basic answer. You need one to get the job you want. Uh, we can actually go a little further than that and say that EPIC actually has many, many different applications. And if you want to be an EPIC analyst or EPIC consultant, you usually pick a application to be certified in. So EPIC has certifications in applications like pharmacy, orders, anesthesia, surgery, oncology, things like that. And so if you want to be an EPIC oncology analyst, you need to get certified in their oncology application. If you want to be an EPIC pharmacy analyst, you need to get certified in their pharmacy application. And EPIC certifications are kind of thought of as lucrative because that's one of the main things that recruiters look for when hiring for these positions. Granted, you don't always need one because the employer that's hiring will sometimes send you off to Wisconsin uh, as part of their, your training. So that's kind of dependent on the employer. You just need to ask them when applying for a job. So the second question is, how do you get EPIC certified? And this actually constitutes 90% of the questions that I get on a day-to-day -day basis. And the answer is very simple here as well. There's only two ways. The first way is you work for EPIC directly. The second way is you work for an institution that already has EPIC or is planning on getting EPIC or in the process of getting EPIC. That is it. So if you don't work for EPIC directly, it means you actually have to get hired to EPIC. If you don't work for an institution that has EPIC, it means you have to get hired to an institution that has EPIC. If you hear about any other way of getting it, you should be very wary because there's only two ways. Uh, I actually had a lot of people or individuals send me emails or websites of places that offered EPIC certification. And when you read the fine print, they actually don't. They, they're like a review course. I don't even know what they teach in their content but be very careful because no organization outside of those two I talked about can actually grant you EPIC certification. So just be very, very careful about that. So the fourth question is, can you get an EPIC certification on your own? And the answer is yes. There is actually two different certification statuses. One is certification and two is proficiency. Uh, proficiency can be done on your own. So. A common question here is what are the differences? And there are four main differences that I'll kind of go over. First of which is classes. Certification requires you to attend classes in person. You have to be there in person in Wisconsin taking classes to get certified. Proficiency doesn't require classes. You can actually just download their manual and be on your merry way, do it on your own time. Uh, consultants or consulting. If you want to be if you want to be a con epic consultant you have to get certified there's no option for proficiency so if you ever want to be epic consultant certification the third thing is grading so although the quizzes the homework the exams the 
projects are the same in both certification and proficiency, certification has a higher cutoff for their passing. So you have to score cumulatively 85% across all of those projects, quizzes, exams, such and such, to get certified. For proficiency, you have to cumulatively score 75%. So that's grading. The last thing is availability. Not all applications have a proficiency status. Some of them require you to actually go to Wisconsin and take in-person classes to get certified. There's just no option for proficiency. And the reason being is because certain applications can wreak some havoc in the Epic system. And obviously Epic doesn't want that, your company doesn't want that, you obviously don't want that. So Epic wants you to attend classes for those specific applications so you understand very well the material before you go into the system and work on it. An example of this is Chronicles Install Utilities. Um, and that application goes a little bit more into the back end of Epic and can seriously do some damage if you mess up. The fifth question is, you currently work for an Epic institution, what are your next steps? This was a pretty common question and there's two things I would say here. The first of which is ask your institution or employer to sponsor you to go to Epic. This is the best path, uh, best case scenario. They'll basically sponsor you, tell you what to do, send you off to Wisconsin, you attend classes, you get your certification. A thing about this though is if you're not already in an informatics position or in that pathway to informatics, there is a very low likelihood that your employer would do this for you because it costs a lot of money to send you over to class. In fact, you have to usually have to attend class multiple times. Um, and just all of that value and that money it costs to do that is a lot. So there's a low likelihood that your employer would do that unless there are certain circumstances like they need individuals, they need bodies, they're implementing. Uh, a new epic system, things like that. So that likely won't work, but it doesn't hurt to ask either. The other thing here is to do it on your own. And what I'm talking about is proficiency. So as I mentioned earlier, proficiency can be done on your own. You basically download the, the study companion, work through the projects, the quizzes, and all that kind of stuff. But in order to take the examinations, you usually have to get a proctor. And that proctor is usually arranged at your organization. And that proctor usually releases your exam for you to take it. So in that circumstance, you need to go through your institution as well. But there's no monetary cost associate, associated with it as it is for certification. So it's a lot easier to get proficient. The thing about that is the answers to most of the questions here is in your institution's realm. So who you need to email, where you need to be, what kind of policies, procedures, or processes you need to do in order to get signed up for an exam differs from institution to institution. So in this case, you still need to talk to your institution or employer and ask them, how do you register for an exam if you want to go down the proficiency route? So uh, I don't have all the answers here, but basically it just comes down to you having to talk to your employer institution to figure out what that process is like. Now the last question is, do you have to be in the medical field to get EPIC certified? And the answer is no. I actually have many colleagues, uh, both current and past, that are in pure technical roles, engineering, programming, just technical backgrounds, that have EPIC certifications. Uh, actually, many of them do. So in many of the applications, uh, EPIC actually has a fundamental section that teach you, teaches you kind of the why or kind of more the clinical context behind different things. So if you don't have a clinical background, they kind of tell you why things should be configured a certain way or why things need to be configured a certain way. And in many cases, when our IT or technical folks don't understand something or rationale for why something needs to be configured a certain way or which direction to go because it's more of a clinical question. They usually come to one of us who have clinical experience or clinical backgrounds and just you know ask for help. Uh, but again, you don't need to be in the medical field to qualify for an EPIC certification, but 
having a clinical background certainly helps. All right, guys, that's kind of it for this video. Hopefully that addresses your questions a lot better. Uh, in some of the future videos, I'll talk about other things, about maintenance of certifications, how many times can you take certifications, and one of the newer things they did relatively is like badges. So there's certifications, proficiencies, and then there's also badges, which I actually have five of them now, which they're, they're pretty cool. I'll show you a picture of them next time. Also, on another note, if you're interested in infection control, which is one of Epic's newest applications, it's uh, not very common right now. So the demand for Epic infection control analysts are pretty high. I do have a video uh, that I would encourage you to watch that is about the role of an infection control analyst. Disclaimer here is it doesn't talk about the content specifically of an Epic infection control analyst, but it's very helpful if uh, this is something you wanna get into in the future, and I would encourage you to check it out. All right, guys, if you have more questions, leave them in the comments below so other people can read them and get answers, and I will see you guys next time. Hey guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, guys.